There is mayhem at Facebook right now. Their systems are delayed or their systems are down. Employees at Facebook are communicating via Twitter, text, and internal messaging. There was a major hack. Now, these major issues happened right before the whistleblower announcement. What's he talking about? Whistleblower? Yes, I know it's confusing, so stick with me and let me do what I do and simplify. Now, the best part, at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you how we are going to make money off this information. You are going to be so amped, it's going to make hitting that like button so much more difficult. So take a minute, do it right now, hit that like button, smash it, and do not forget to subscribe. Now, I've never seen Mark Zuckerberg speechless, but there he was, and her name, Frances Hagen. The whistleblower. Now let me tell you more about Frances. She was a product manager at Facebook civic integrity team. Do you hear the irony there? Civic integrity team? Now, like I tell you guys, you must plan ahead. She was a planner. She left Facebook in May of this year. And before leaving the company, she took tens of thousands of documents. Actually, she stole tens of thousands of documents. Now these documents told the story or tell the story about how Facebook uses algorithms and specifically how they utilize them so well. It's almost unfair. Back to Frances. She's got a Harvard education. She's worked at four social media companies, the largest being Google, the newest being Pinterest. She is an algorithm queen. She knows everything about algorithms. With that said, it would be pretty hard to discredit somebody like that. So now let's talk about what she did with those tens of thousands of documents. And what exactly did they say? The first thing she did is she gave the documents to the Wall Street Journal. The second thing she did is she gave those same documents to the SEC. The third thing she did is she just agreed to testify in front of Congress. I joined Facebook because I think Facebook has the potential to bring out the best in us. But I'm here today because I believe Facebook's products harm children, stoke division, and weaken our democracy. The company's leadership knows how to make Facebook and Instagram safer, but won't make the necessary changes because they have put their astronomical profits before people. Congressional action is needed. They won't solve this crisis without your help. Yesterday, we saw Facebook get taken off the internet. I don't know why it went down, but I know that for more than five hours, Facebook wasn't used to deepen divides, destabilize democracies, and make young girls and women feel bad about their bodies. It also means that millions of small businesses weren't able to reach potential customers, and countless photos of new babies weren't joyously celebrated by family and friends around the world. I believe in the potential of Facebook. We can have social media we enjoy, that connects us without tearing our apart our democracy, putting our children in danger, and sowing ethnic violence around the world. We can do better. I have worked as a product manager at large tech companies since 2006, including Google, Pinterest, Yelp, and Facebook. My job has largely focused on algorithmic products like Google Plus Search and recommendation systems like the one that powers the Facebook newsfeed. Having worked on four different types of social networks, I understand how complex and nuanced these problems are. However, the choices being made inside of Facebook are disastrous for our children, for our public safety, for our privacy, and for our democracy. And that is why we must demand Facebook make changes. During my time at Facebook, first working as the lead product manager for civic misinformation, and later on counter espionage, I saw Facebook repeatedly encounter conflicts between its own profits and our safety. Facebook consistently resolved these conflicts in favor of its own profits. So let's talk about what those algorithms and what the information said. First, Facebook does not treat everybody equally. They have more lenient rules for their elite users, for those with elite status. Now, I don't understand what makes somebody an elite status member. Is it somebody that's huge in social media? Because maybe one day my dreams will come true. And Facebook, maybe you'll give me that elite status. Um, uh, no. <laughs> 
Facebook owns Instagram and makes money hand over feet. Now, internally, Facebook acknowledged that one in three teenage girls has body issues. And rather than finding a solution of this ever-growing problem, they choose to exploit it. They choose to exploit the confidence issues. They choose to profit off it. They direct their advertisers to this specific group of girls in the tens of millions. And the truth comes out. It's about the almighty dollar. And then... If that wasn't worse enough, I heard the story that they're pushing on January 6th. Now, did you guys just have that lipo moment? Yes, Facebook knowingly provoked, and I almost want to say encouraged. They help spread the word. Now, understand the effects, the lasting effects. That situation is still ongoing. It has hurt our democratic system. It has brought physical injury to those federal employees guarding the Capitol. It has brought emotional pain and suffering to those who are involved, and it has changed their family balance forever. And yes, yes, those individuals made their own decisions. But how much of the responsibility lays on Facebook and their algorithms and people doing those searches and it pushing those people to certain algorithms and certain information which might have had a direct effect on their decision-making process? Understand, companies that maintain a happy or satisfied employees perform better in the markets. Yes, there is a 100% correlation. Tell me, it makes sense. Happy employees are more productive. More productive employees means larger profits. So last year, there was a survey done. Number one was Amazon. Number two, Microsoft. Number three, Apple. Number four, Netflix. And number five out of the five companies surveyed was Facebook. So now, what happens with Facebook? How are regulators going to deal with Facebook? Yes, we all know that there are huge fines coming. Now let's remember back to 2018 when Facebook got in trouble with dealing with Cambridge Analytica using their data. They received bad PR along with a hefty fine. And then you have the story from 2012, which was record breaking at the time. Drum roll please. $5 billion fine. Let's remember, at the time, they shared user information from 87 million users' accounts with their advertisers. Today, they have over 1.8 billion users. So here we are. We're nine years later. We're in 2021. Let's make a prediction, as I know I love to do. Um, I'm thinking an adequate fine is probably $20 billion. Now, I know it sounds extremely high, but it also sounds like the penalty should fit the crime. Now, if you have an opinion on what a good penalty or fine would be for Facebook to show that people are getting justice, please use the comment section below. Tell me what your thoughts are. Now, let's get back to Frances. What does she have to gain in this whole scenario? Well, first, she's got a 2020 interview. Next, I'm sure she'll have a book deal probably a movie. She will have legal issues, but what if whistleblowers get paid? Now, legally, whistleblowers are entitled to 10 to 30 percent of the fine or the recovered money. So let's go with my scenario. Facebook gets fined 20 billion dollars. She gets, let's say, 25 percent of that. That would be five billion dollars. Okay, okay, enough about Francis. We know why you're still watching the video and we know why I am here. We intend to make money off Facebook, so let me tell you how we're gonna do that. After the news broke yesterday, Facebook was down 5%. In fact, it traded as low as $322 and then it bounced up to $326. Now at the opening this morning, Facebook looks to be around 329 or 330. I'm a math guy. You guys know I love math. Let's focus on the numbers. If there is a $20 billion fine, which is 2% of the company's current valuation, and the stock was down 5% yesterday, it tells me that weak hands were selling. It tells me there's opportunity for Matt to enter, which is what I did yesterday. So in all transparency, I purchased stock at $323, and then I purchased Leap call options, meaning I gave myself until January for the stock to turn around. My prediction, I'm zooming out. I see Facebook at $376 by the 1st of January. Now, most important, don't let those kid and kickers get you down. Use the information I provide on Facebook to help you become a more efficient trader. I'm dropping videos every day, so use the comment section. Let me know what topics or subjects you would like me to speak about. Now go, share this link, 
pay it forward, and have a great day of trading.